She has 20 years of industry experience in commercial real estate, facilities, and property management. You can often find her enjoying the outdoors, but she's inside now here at RTP 180. Please welcome Janelle Gardner. Sorry, I'm usually loud enough. People don't usually tell me I have to use a mic. So um, you've already gotten two really great perspectives on how Agile can be used. So I'm getting ready to show you yet a third. Um, so I'm going to talk to you a little bit about how we've used Agile as we've helped develop our workplace transformation. So um, it's really important for what we're doing. It's not something new. Everyone around here in the park is looking to make changes, um, to make updates and grow our park. So as part of that, um, we've taken a look at how do we help influence the culture of our workers and how we can use Agile to help transform the workspace. So along with that, a lot of the things you've heard, speed, risk, all of those things, um, we wanna use it to help drive employee productivity and also their engagement. Additionally, we're hoping to attract new talent and also keep the talent we have because everyone is trying to figure out how to do things faster and better. So as the delivery of the workspace, that's my job to try and help them get to where they need to go. So Cisco is primarily IT company, right? But we do more things than just boxes, software, technology, a lot of different things. So while we do have some technology that we use in the workspace to help you with being agile, I'm not going to touch on this right now. I want to actually show you some of the ways that we've actually put that into the workspace. So we know with Agile that it needs to be very activity-based. Um, we have people that, Agile being relatively new, we have people still using the waterfall method. Um, we have people doing Scrum. It's kind of all across the map as to how they want to use it, and some people are still scared of how to use it and if it's actually gonna work for them. Are they really gonna get the results? So what we've been trying to do is actually take a step back and we're listening to our folks and we're, we're trying to introduce and use their methods. So I'm gonna show you a little bit of a case study that we did um, where we actually took one of our engineering groups and we tried to work with them and have a very holistic and organic interaction. We kind of threw all of our typical processes away for how we would develop workspace. Um, and we worked with them and said, Agile's new for you. It's big in the industry. Let's figure out how we can use it to help you guys develop the workspace you need so that you can be successful. Um, so they, they literally had their manifesto printed. Um, it was hung everywhere. And they constantly went back to that. So it was, it was really challenging for us to kind of step outside of our comfort zone. Um, and get down to their level, but I think it was important and it really helped drive the success of their project. So I just wanted to share a couple of pictures. I really like the other photos with the Legos and things um, because we, we really did just throw it all out the window. So when we went in there with them, we literally had them create a floor plan, just an open box. And they could sit there and as engineers try and figure out how can I make this workspace work for me and my teams? What do we need to do? because they were struggling. Not only are they trying to figure out how they're gonna work, they also have to figure out how their workplace is gonna support the Agile methodology. So in order to do that, being engineers, we gave them all the tools so that they could physically build it out and test it out and see what was missing. Down to the walls, tables, little individual people. We had the boards up. They're running their own little scrum sessions to try and figure out what's missing. Um, it was definitely a learning experience for me because it's not something that I typically use in my everyday work. So again, for us, changing the workspace, and you've seen some really cool things here um, in the frontier, we're trying to be extremely flexible. And so we know with these teams, their teams could be a team of four, it could be a team of six, it could be a team of eight. Depending on what it is that they're trying to do, their teams can change and they need that flexibility. So what we've done is we've enabled them to just unplug and they can literally move their desk and change their teams without our help. Um, we've tried to make everything as easy as possible for them. Literally as easy as possible. They don't need our help anymore. They can, they can un untag, they can go and we've got whiteboards all over the place in different ways, some with technology, some without. 
because it just depends on their needs. And again, they don't know what they're going to be working on next. We also tried to listen to them and know that they need different areas for breakout sessions because again, it's got to be able to support all the different things that they're trying to work on. And the teams that we used for this were doing both audio and visual testing, which are both really important, but both have completely different needs. So on one side, we've got a team that is trying to be heads down, quiet, but still get up in the middle of everything and hold their scrum sessions and trying to do them in an environment where it's open. So we're trying to create little alcoves and places where they can literally get up go hold their 10 to 15 minute session, do what they need to do, and then go back to their desk so that they can start working on their sprints. Oh, wow, that went fast, okay. <laughs> um, again, just with other meeting space, a lot of our teams for collaboration, which is what people use this for, we're collaborating all over the world. Um, our campus is built up and probably the majority of the teams are pretty small and the people they're working with are all over the world. So this particular team had a lot of people that worked in Texas. So for them, their needs were different. So we tried to create a lot of spaces where they can go in, they can make changes, they can be on video, they've got the whiteboarding, they've got the, the tools that they need so whenever they're trying to do these sprints and have their, their meetings, they can be live with their team and they can interact at the same time. They also like to have fun, right? So Agile's all about having fun. Um, and getting the work done, trying to figure out a new way to innovate. So we tried to give them purposeful, purposeful space. So not only is it a meeting space, it's also a ping pong table. <laughs> Just additional spaces, again, being agile, they can do meetings, they can have fun at the same time, and they've got multiple varieties of ways that they can ideate. So I think I kept close to my five minutes. Wise man once said, time is, time is an illusion, lunchtime doubly so. All right, questions for Janelle about the transformations they're doing at Cisco using Agile. Oh, finally, someone from not this side of the room. Awesome. All right, coming your way, sir, if you would stand up, please. versus uh, more traditional environments, perhaps where people can sit and actually be quiet and not be in an environment where, for example, they have to put their headphones on to be quiet, which then negates the interaction. So I'd like to hear your opinions on that. Sure. So um, you could probably ask five different people, and they're going to have probably 20 different opinions on how that works. And it, it, it depends on the leadership. Um, and how, how accepting they are of this. So we took this team in. Um, they were the first ones on our campus to do this, which is why I tried to really work with them and go through their methodology to help gain their trust so that they could do it. Um, we gave them a test lab to sit in so that they could start getting used to the space, and we used a lot of the information we got from them back to help inform the decisions on what we delivered. So you're right, it's noisy. However, what that particular team found is it's noisy, but everyone working on something at the same time, it creates its own white noise. So kind of like going to the mall when you're shopping, everybody at Christmas time is, is busy and talking, but you can still have a private conversation with the person next to you because you have that natural white noise. What they've also done is they found that they can kind of change the way that their behaviors are. They all know that when they're out there at their desk, it's typically a quieter time and their interaction is with the people in their pod. If they change teams, they can move their desk and rotate somewhere else. And then they've just naturally started to develop that if we need to get up and go have our scrum, now that's what we actually go to a closed meeting room for. Um, that's what they go and do their video interactions for. But a lot of them are still held out on the floor. And not typical, but with this particular team, their interactions and their activity and attendance to the office actually went up. That doesn't happen for most, um, but they actually found that for them, where a typical person would have an opportunity to go home because they had a doctor's appointment and not come back, they were afraid that they were going to miss something because now they've taken down the walls and they are getting problems solved faster. Good question and answer there. Next question, keep it on this side of the room. 
Were you able to uh, quantify the changes, or sorry, excuse me, can you quantify the amount of productivity those engineers had pre and post, like number of projects increased, less time spent on projects, things like that? Was there uh, quantitative values? I don't have the quantitative values. What I can tell you that I do know is that where they had teams that didn't used to come in, they didn't have those personal interactions, the, the amount of time that they started to come back into the office went up 20%. And these people have been working in this particular environment, this group, for going on three years now, I believe. Um, and these are people that I see every single day on my campus and still walk by and tell me thank you. Thank you for listening to them. Thank you for going through the process with them because it's made them a better team. And that's pretty rare in what I do. <laughs> True facts. Uh, other questions? All right. I'm going to come around this way so I don't have to throw over quite as many people. I walk and I walk and come back to you, ma'am. Here you are. Joyce Steinberg. And to now if you could talk into the uh, big black dot there. <laughs> Joyce Steinberg with JSI Marketing. First, I want to thank you and congratulate you on a great youth study. And I love the fact that you are continuously engaging with your key stakeholders. Based on your learning, because you mentioned that was stretching out of your normal comfort zone and routine. Yes. What learnings have you applied to projects since that time that you were able to reapply for continued successful development? First and foremost, what helps with what I do is having the testimonials first from my clients. And oftentimes, when we conduct things like focus groups or other engagements, I can show the success for what, where they've been. I've gotten testimonials from their director and other people from their team that will come talk to them about how it helped them. And then I start walking them through their space. So a lot of it is just more groundwork and actual, let's go feel it, touch it, see how it works for you, and see what changes we need. But we, we spend a lot more time asking them what they need and trying to better understand that rather than now, in the past, we told them what they needed. So it's, it's, a, it's a big change. Great. Time for one more question if anyone has one. Anyone, anyone? Yes, sir. Right here in the front row. Coming your way. You've used the phrase um, move their desk a couple of times. Can you clarify you don't mean do you, um, that they physically move the piece of furniture, do you mean instead that they pick up their device and move to another location, or? I do not. Um, they physically, the way that we designed that for them, um, because they, they couldn't always wait on us to come do what they needed to do. Um, the design was, was able to let them, they had a tether, if you will. So they have an eight foot cord that has all of their data and electrical in it. It's all wrapped, so it's safe. Right, it's plugged into um, the trough where they're at, and all of our desks are on rollers. So they're all on casters, they're locked whenever they're seated, but when they need to make a change, all they have to do is unplug. They can strap everything down on their desk and they can literally roll it over to the next team that they need to be with. Um, it just, it makes it easier for everyone. Nobody has to wait for us anymore. A mobile workforce in the truest sense of the word. Give it up for Janelle Gardner.